Hey, PCCL channel greets you. What is on the left is the history of the chemical reaction I'm going to talk. Zinc and copper ions. It can release thermal energy. We will rather focus on what happens on the right, when chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. Here, by placing a voltmeter with the COM terminal on the zinc. It displays a positive voltage of 1.1 volts. This is a redox reaction. 1.1 volts is the standard potential. There are as many electrons captured as electrons supplied. So this is an electrochemical cell. I found a tiny engine in a model shop and managed to get it running with this assembly. It's not perfect but it's still a battery. What we measured earlier, in the absence of any device, was the no load voltage, which is also called the electromotive force. This setup is not perfect because the transfer of electrons will mostly take place locally. It is not interesting. We want the electrons to go through the circuit. How to force them to go through the circuit? Mr. Daniel had thought of a porous membrane between the two solutions. However, it turned out that the salt bridge was more effective. You see two half cells. Two separate containers that make the zinc is not in contact with the oxidizing agent, the copper ions. And electron transfer can only be done through the resistor. There is an oxidation here at the anode, and the electrons are supplied here by the metal zinc. The concentration of zinc ions will increase. Here. The capture of electrons will be done by the oxidant, which is reduced. The oxidizing agent cannot be oxidized. It cannot be all at once. The oxidizing agent is reduced. It captures the electrons, and since it's a reduction, we'll call it the cathode. The salt bridge. What's happening in the salt bridge? Well, it's soaked with a solution of potassium chloride. Remember that there are positive ions and negative ions. What are the directions of cations and anions? Well it turns out that the copper ions concentration is going to decrease. But the electric neutrality of the solution must be maintained. So the positive charges here will be brought by the potassium ions. The cations here will play this role of preserving the electroneutrality of the solution. Same on the other side. As the zinc ions concentration will increase, there will be a deficit in anions, in negative charges, and it's the chloride ions which will compensate here. Why the two half cells? What is the salt bridge used for? Here's our stack here. About direction. So either you retain this story, to compensate to balance the solutions, or, to find the direction of the ions in the salt bridge. You retain that the negative charges circulate here in a clockwise direction. The positive charges, they, in a counterclockwise direction. See that the ions chloride flow, if I consider the whole loop, in the same direction as the electrons which are negative. So, it circulates like that, in this direction. So the chloride ions here flow in the same direction as the electrons. So of course if I put the copper on the left, the electrons and chloride ions will flow counterclockwise. I come back to the copper on the right. And on the left. And the copper on the left. I'm doing this to keep you from using your visual memory only.
You have to use thinking, of course. So an exercise to train. Zinc is replaced by aluminum. Concentrations are given. Stop the video to read. Have you read? Let's go. You're asked, what is the battery polarity? The comp terminal is connected to aluminum, and the voltage that find is positive. This allows you to say that aluminum is the negative terminal and copper is the positive terminal. The role of the salt bridge. We just talked about it. You're asked for a diagram. Here, aluminum replaces zinc. Write and name the reactions that occur at the electrodes. Oxidation at the anode. Vowel vowel. A reduction at the cathode. Consonant consonant. The polarities, the plus and the minus. Show how the transformation between the two couples can be written. It takes as many electrons captured as electrons emitted. We multiply here by 3, and there by 2. The initial reaction quotient, Q. Here is the expression, here you have copper ions, and aluminum ions. You will only consider dissolved substances, so copper ions and aluminum ions. Here, the concentration of the product, in superscripted stoichiometric coefficient, 2. There, the concentration of copper 2 ions. In superscripted stoichiometric coefficient, which is here the number 3. Numerical application yields 10. You are then asked, in which direction will the equilibrium shift? You have to compare these two sizes. This one is given to you, and that one you just found, that's 10. 10 is less. As the reaction coefficient is lower, it wants to reach the equilibrium constant. The reaction will evolve in the forward direction. The spontaneous evolution, that which decreases the reagent and increases the product. This result is therefore consistent, as we have already said, with the polarity of the battery. Calculate the amount of electricity. There is a formula. Numerical application. Result. Quantity of matter. They are moles. The in here tells you that these are moles here of transferred electrons. At that point you have another formula here which is Q equals N times F. I remind you that the Faraday is the product of the Avogadro number by the elementary electric charge of an electron then. Numerical application. Result. Give a relation between the amount of electron matter and that of aluminum. At this point, the relation, you will find it here, with the half equation of oxidation of aluminum. And you write that number of moles of aluminum on its coefficient equals number of moles of electrons on its coefficient, which is 3. Calculate the mass loss of the aluminum electrode during all that time. This operation of 1 hour 30 minutes at 40 milliampere. Well you use what you already have at your disposal. And you are given the molar mass of aluminum in the statement. It is there, at 27 grams per mole. I placed it here.
in the numerical application. You might be questioned about the electrical capacity of the battery. They are exactly the same formulas. The duration of the battery here, it would be delta T max, would correspond to Q max. You may be asked questions about the characteristic curve of a battery. That's it for this video. Thank you.